Today we get to cover two unrelated topics. One is going to be metric volume, and some of you have already been doing this in your science classes. For others, it's new. And then we're going to do the other special right triangle. We've already done 30, 60, 90. Today we'll do 45, 45, 90. So first, facts that you need to know for metric volume. A milliliter is one cubic centimeter. So if you have a little cube that is a centimeter by a centimeter by a centimeter, that's the same as a milliliter. And we also need to know that a liter is a thousand milliliters. But a milliliter is exactly the same as a cubic centimeter. So if one milliliter is the same as a cubic centimeter, I could change this label and say a liter is also a thousand cubic centimeters. So need to know these by memory. Some of you already know them. Others, it's new. Everybody needs to know it. We don't give you this on a test. We expect you to know that. So now we're just going to do some examples where we use these multipliers as part of what we are figuring out. So if we have 12,000 liters and we want to convert that to milliliters, we start by writing down the one that we're given, 12,000 liters. And do we have a, multi a multiplier that converts between liters and milliliters? It was just on the last slide. Who can tell me how many milliliters in a liter? Abby. So we put a thousand up here, one down here, cancel out the liters. And then we have 12,000 times 1,000. So 12,000 with three extra zeros. And it's milliliters. And I expect commas in this. Start on the right hand side and count to the left. One, two, three, and you do a comma. One, two, three, and you do a comma. So 12 million milliliters. Thumbs up, thumbs down, are we good with that? Okay, here's another one. Now we want to convert cubic feet to liters. So that one's going to be a little bit more involved because the liters are metric and the feet are not metric. So we're going to start with our 10 cubic feet. And we just talked about a milliliter is the same as a cubic centimeter. So that lets us know that we need to get feet and change that to centimeters. So we need to change feet to inches to be able to do that. What multiplier do I need here, Kit? How do I fill that in, inches and feet? 12 inches is one foot. However, I have cubic feet, so I need to cube each of these numbers and each of these units, and then I can cancel out my cubic feet. So now I have cubic inches. Well, I also know how to convert inches to centimeters. Make sure I get the inches in the denominator since I already have inches in the numerator. Griff, what multiplier do I need now? And again, I'm talking cubic inches, so I need to, to cube all of the numbers and all of the units. And now my inches cancel out, and now I have cubic centimeters. What do I know about cubic centimeters and liters? Wyatt? And yes, I could do it in a two-step process like that. I could say that one cubic centimeter is one milliliter, and then change my milliliters to liters, and that's totally okay. Or it's also totally okay to do it a little bit shorter and say a thousand cubic centimeters are one liter. Is everybody okay if I write it down the shorter way? So 1,000 cubic centimeters are one liter. So 1,000 cubic centimeters in one liter. And now I need your help punching that into the calculator. Do I need to put cubes on all of these numbers? 
That's the one you got to be careful on because it was already a thousand cubic centimeters in one liter. And it's cubic centimeters I'm trying to cancel. I don't need to cube it again. So I don't need to cube any of the others. I do need to write down nice and neatly what you're entering in your calculators. 10 times 12 cubed times 2.54 cubed. I don't need to worry about writing down the ones, but then I've got a thousand in the denominator and I need to know what you are coming up with for our answers here. So have we already typed that in? Austin, you have that already? Thumbs up, thumbs down, 283.168. Sounds good to me also. And we will label that with leaders. Okay, let's do one more, and then we'll move on to our other topic. So this time we're going to go from leaders to cubic inches. So 4.7 liters. Okay, do I know I know how to get liters to either milliliters or cubic centimeters. Which one's going to be more helpful if I'm trying to get to inches? Leah? Because my multiplier is between centimeters and inches, so that's the one that's going to be more helpful. So I need to put liters in the denominator since they were already in the numerator. One liter is 1,000 cubic centimeters, and the liters have canceled out. Nicole, now what multiplier do I need? So 2.54 goes numerator or denominator? So 2.54 centimeters in the denominator in one inch, but these were cubic centimeters, so I need to make these others be cubic which means I need to cube every single thing there. And now I have the cubic inches that I want. So once again, punch this in your calculators for me. 4.7 times 1,000 that is not cubed over 2.54 that is cubed, and we don't need the ones in there. And that will be cubic inches. And who's typed that in your calculator already? Wyatt, what do you have? Anybody else? 286.812? And label it with cubic inches. Questions on any of that? Okay, then we will move on to um, our new special right triangle, 45, 45, 90. If it is 45, 45, 90, we know that it's isosceles. If it has two angles that are the same, those two legs have to be the same. So I can do a reference triangle with any number I want on those legs. I could have, you see where I put ones? I could have put three and three and X. I could have put 2.5 and 2.5 and X. But the easiest formula, the easiest one to do and to remember is if those are ones. So I'm going to put ones on both of those legs. And if I do that, how do I figure out how long the hypotenuse is going to be? Griff? Mm -hmm. So the Pythagorean theorem tells us that 1 squared plus 1 squared is x squared. So x squared is 2. So x is the square root of 2. And that is our reference triangle. So I want you to copy that down in your uh, notes list or your formula pages. So when you're doing these problems with 45, 45, 90 triangles, you will draw this as your reference triangle. Be sure it looks like it has a 90 degree angle. And be sure it looks like the two sides are about the same length. And then you can either set up the proportions or you can say, you know, whatever this leg is, if I know that, all I have to do is multiply by root 2 to get the hypotenuse. Or 
looking at this, hey, I know the hypotenuse, so to get this side, I divide by the square root of 2. And pretty obviously, I think, if you know one of the legs, you know the other one is exactly the same number. So we're going to try that out here. We have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we are going to draw our reference triangle. 1, 1, root 2. Put our square root sign in, label the 45. And first off, everybody, what is Y? Look at the picture. What is Y? Everybody good with Y is 3? If you know one leg, you know the other leg. It's isosceles. This says if you know a leg, multiply by root 2 to get the hypotenuse. So that says if I want the hypotenuse, I take one of my legs and multiply it by root 2, and I have finished solving that problem. Some of you I know are more comfortable setting up the, the proportions instead of doing this multiply by root 2 or divide by root 2 stuff. It is still okay. Draw your reference triangle, and let's do our proportions. 3 over 1 is y over 1 and is x over root 2. So if I did my cross product right here, I'd still have that y is 3. If I did my cross product with these two, I'd still have that x is 3 root 2. So either way is okay. I'm just trying to show you both so that you can decide which works better for you. One more example, and then we'll, we will call it a day and work on the homework. This time, what I know is the hypotenuse, not one of the legs. So make sure I have a reference triangle on my problem set close to this problem so I can look at it. It is OK to set up the proportions. It is also OK to say, oh, I know the hypotenuse. So if I want a leg, I need to divide by the root of 2. That way would say y is 5 divided by the root by root 2, rationalize the denominator, and y is 5 root 2 over 2. If you prefer, you can still set up the proportions. y over 1 is equal to y over 1 is equal to 5 over root 2. Oh, y is 5 over root 2 which is what we had here, and rationalize the denominator, and we have exactly the same thing again. Questions from anybody on either topic from today?